Praise the Lord. Thank God for the presence of God in our midst this morning like we sang the song. We come into the sanctuary to praise the beautiful one. And uh, thank God for his presence in our midst. Uh, thank God for this opportunity to stand with the word of God. For our meditation this morning, I'm going to read from Psalm number 84, verses 1 and 2. Psalm number 84, verses 1 and 2. Verse 1, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. Verse 2, my soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh, they cry out for the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our heart and our flesh, we are come here this morning in the sanctuary because our heart and our flesh cry out for who? The living God. Hallelujah. The title of the psalm, if you go into the title of the psalm, it's a psalm of the sons of Korah. When sons of Korah are saying, how lovely is your dwelling place? We can put up the verse one there. How lovely is your dwelling place? They are longing for the house of the Lord. They are having a deep urge to come into the house of the Lord because they have a deep love. They have an affection for the house of God. In the journey of their life, house of God is something, the dwelling place of God is something very near and dear to their hearts. I'll come back to the Psalm 84 in a little bit, but wanted to take a few moments to look into the background of the generations of Korah. There was something very tragic that happened in their ancestors' life, Korah. Numbers chapter 16 explains the account of Korah, the ancestor father. Korah and a group of people, they rebelled against Moses. And God was very displeased with that. Moses responded and said that, I am doing only what the Lord is telling me to do. And we can see that in Numbers chapter 16, verse 28. And Moses said, the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my will. And God was displeased with Korah and the group that rebelled against Moses. And you know what happened? Numbers chapter 16, verse 31, it says, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the men with Korah with all their goods. As they rebelled, this is what happened, we read there. The earth opened up, and it means the earth opened up and swallowed them. It means that there was an earthquake there, right? We all are aware of the Richter scales. And we know that we in Oklahoma have earthquakes. And the most recent earthquake that was well known in the news was in the East Coast, actually, where if we talk to the people, they felt the ground was shaking and the earth was moving, actually. And that Richter scale was what? About 4.8. Here in this passage, we do not know what is a Richter scale, but we here see that the earth opened and swallowed Korah and the group of people who rebelled. But one thing, the sons of Korah, they did not die during this earthquake. Numbers chapter 26, verse 10 and 11. Numbers 26, verse 10 and 11. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah, and they died. But the children of Korah, they did not die. 
I don't know why it is like that. It is kind of, it's interesting that the Spirit of God very clearly said in the previous verse, the other households died, but here the children of Korah did not die. Sons of Korah did not die. We do not know if the sons of Korah did not take part in the rebellion, or maybe they were very small in age not to be involved in the rebellion. Whatever is the reason, they took a different path than their ancestor Korah. Later on, down the years, sons of Korah are praising God with a loud and high voices. We see that in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 19. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 19. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohatites and of the children of Korathites stood up to praise God, the Lord of God of Israel, with voices loud and high. Hallelujah. Another generation is coming up, and they are praising God. Generations of Korah came out different than the father. God is merciful God. Hallelujah. Fathers may do a mistake. Parents may have mistaken. But the sons of Korah did not go in the same path. Hallelujah. They said, we're going to change this. We will be obedient to the voice of God. We will live a life that is right in the sight of God. If there have been mistakes made, ask for forgiveness. Get right with God. God is a merciful God. Generations of Korah, what did they do? They followed God. Generations of Korah, they followed God. How do we know? This Korah might live a little bit around the, uh, later the time of Moses. At that time, much later on, we read about the sons of Korah singing praises during the temple worship and all the kind of stuff. I don't know when they wrote the Psalms, but... Sons of Korah have written not only Psalm number 84, they wrote Psalm number 85, they wrote Psalm number 87, they wrote Psalm number 88, as well as Psalm numbers 42 through 48, most of them. 42 to 48. How many of you know Psalm number 46? The Lord is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm number 42, verse 1, as the deer... Pandeth for the water, so my soul thirst after thee. The sons of Korah are following God. Hallelujah. They're not only writing psalms. They are encouraging the congregation. They're encouraging the people of God. Come on, worship God. Hallelujah. In Psalms 48, sons of Korah, they're longing for the house of God. They're grateful to God. They're thanking God. For the mercies of God that God has spared us. My ancestors, our forefathers were taken away. But he spared us. And we found grace in the sight of God. Hallelujah. And that's the great and mighty God we serve. Shouldn't we be thankful that we are also spared from the wrath of God. And from the judgment of God. How many things we have done in our lives. But the Almighty God, just like we read in the Psalms this morning, His anger is but for a moment. His plenty is in mercy. Hallelujah. As far as east from the west. Hallelujah. The mercy of God extends. We are no better than, I am no better than Korah or the sons of Korah. But thank goodness for the mercy of God that He has extended upon our lives. Hallelujah. Now going to verse 1. Let's go back to verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh, they cry out for the living God. In the journey of the life of the sons of Korah, they have a deep desire all the time for the house of God. The house of God in the Old Testament times, we can see it is called the tabernacle. It is called the tabernacle. This psalm may have been composed during the times of the tabernacle, during the days of tabernacle. 
for the children of Israel in the wilderness journey, the tabernacle was very much involved in their lives or centered around. Tabernacle would invoke their thoughts and their emotions. And verse 2, sons of Korah are saying, my soul yearns for the courts of the Lord. Notice verse 2. He says, my soul even faints for the courts of the Lord. Not only yearning, he's so much yearning, he's waiting and waiting and waiting and longing, his heart is fainting for the courts of the Lord. What is the reason their soul yearned for the house of the Lord? What is the reason their soul not only yearned, but also fainted for the house of the Lord? It's in verse 2 itself. You can see verse 2. My heart and my heart faints because they can meet the living God in the house of God. They can meet the living God in the house of God. Because they want to meet the living God, what are they doing? The flesh is crying out for the house of God. Because they want to meet the living God in the house of God, their hearts are crying out for the living God. Children of God, when we come into the house of God, our deepest intention should be what? One and only one. What is that? Cry out so that we can meet God. Meet the living God. Hallelujah. So that we can meet the living God. When we come to church, I'm meaning a church at the Lord, our main objective and intent should be meeting God rather than any other program or agenda or anything else. Friends, meeting friends, those are all great. But secondary, that our main thing is that we should be meeting the living God. Hallelujah. Psalmist is yearning for the courts of the tabernacle. When we look at Psalm number 84, he seems to be standing on the outside. He's looking in. Standing on the outside of the tabernacle and he's looking in. And I'm thinking his thoughts are maybe, Lord, can, we, can you please take me past these crowds of people? Lord, can you please take me past this outer gate? Lord, can we take me past this uh, brazen altar to where? To the holy of holies. To see what? To see. Lord, I want to see your face. I want to see your face, oh God. I am hungering. I am thirsting for what? To see the face of God. Hallelujah. We know in the Old Testament times, Unlike the New Testament times, it was very difficult to come into the tabernacle of God. There were so many stipulations. You go and read Numbers, uh, chapter, book of Numbers and Leviticus, the Gershonites, the Merorites, the Kohathites, they were all assigned different aspects of the tabernacle. The Merorites could not touch the vessels in the sanctuary. The, the Kohathites or the Korah, sons of Korah could not become the priest. It was very stipulated. And it says very clearly, if you go and touch any of the things in the sanctuary without the permission of God, you're going to what? Die. To see what? To see the face of God. We living in the New Testament times. What is going on, right? What do we have? Do we have to take any permission from anybody? What does it say? It says that we can. All the curtains are taken out. All the stipulations. Our record. The curtains. Everything is taken out. We know the reason why it is taken out, right? It is all taken out so that what? We can approach the throne of God. 
the mercy of seed of God and say, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. If the psalmist, the sons of Korah, were this excited and eager and have this urge to go into the presence of God, we in the New Testament times, how much more? Because all the stipulations are taken out. Come into the courts of God. All you have to do is cry out. Cry out. He's saying that I cry out to the living God. Many times in the New Testament times, we are so much, so much having all these other things that we have in our lives. Our emotional stuff, our intellectual baggages, you know, all the other things we kind of as a curtain, we are not able to come into the presence of God. Let's pray that, God, I want to remove that. I want to remove that. And I want to come into the Holy of Holies. When you come into the Holy of Holies, what happens? Like the song says, right? My heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God, for spirit, water to my soul. When you come into the presence of the Holy of Holies, what happens? You have the water that is going to quench and satisfy the thirst of the spirit that is having your heart. Why are we staying away from the Holy of Holies? Hallelujah. In the Gospels, we can see that. In the Gospels, we can see that. There are people trying to come to Jesus. This morning also, Pastor Odi Joseph mentioned People, that lady was with us whose son was died. She was coming to come into the presence of God. But the priests were trying to stop her. People will stop. There might be things that are stopping you. But come to the, your heart should cry. Our flesh should cry. For who? The living God. Hallelujah. My time is running out here. In the Old Testament times, a person had to go around Go approach the tabernacle to see the presence of God. But something changed in the New Testament times. What is that? And that something that changed in the New Testament times, the Old Testament saints used to long for it. This is what happened. Who is the, ta who is the real tabernacle? Jesus, who is the tabernacle, came and what? He dwelt among us. He who is the substance of the true tabernacle he came and dwelt the meaning of dwelt is what tabernacled he tabernacled among us he was full of grace and full of truth full of truth and Jesus tabernacled among us Jesus the substance of the tabernacle he not only came down to this earth he went upon the cross. He who is the substance of all the lames that had been slain in the tabernacle, he went upon the cross. Why did he go upon the cross? So that you and I, we who are the sinners, will become what? We will become the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that we will become the temple of the living God. Where do you see that? First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. Children of God. Can you see this? The difference between the Old Testament times and the New Testament times. Hallelujah. We who are living in the New Testament times, they had to go physically to approach the tabernacle, the presence of God. But we, in the New Testament times, because Jesus Christ, who is the substance of all the things of the shadow, of the tabernacle, of the slain lamb, he fulfilled everything so that you and I, who were aliens, who were cast out, now we can come into the presence of God. Now we are the temple of God. Now we are the tabernacle of God. And the Spirit of God dwells within us. So what should we do? When people look at us, now we are the tabernacle. Like what did uh, the sons of Korah says? How lovely is the tabernacle. So when people look at we who are the tabernacles, 
they should say wow there is plus you are pleasant beautiful lovely why nothing but because jesus is in our lives hallelujah children of god i think my time is up here there's a lot more to be said in 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 psalm number 84 my heart and my flesh cry out for you the living god as the worship team is coming over here i wanted to mention one more thing in verse number 3 the psalmist says verse number 3 we can read here that even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young a place near to your altar so this psalmist probably was a keen observer i cannot come into this tabernacle but look at that there is a sparrow that is sitting by the altar over there look at that there is a swallow that is sitting by the tabernacle according to one of the bible uh, commentators the sparrow is a bird that is very insignificant and swallow represents a bird that is restless so he's saying that wow how blessed the sparrow could find a home in the tabernacle how blessed this insignificant sparrow and this restless swallow could come and find a place in the house of the lord children of god we were insignificant like a sparrow we were insignificant but the lord almighty because of his grace now we are in the house of the lord like the spa- like the like the swallow we were what restless we heard the famous statement right my soul is restless till i find rest in thee our souls are restless till we find rest in him so we can see that even the sparrow and the swallow found a place in the house of god and the psalmist was envying that psalmist was envying that children of god there is a lot of blessings because we are in the house of god there are a lot of blessings we have and as we heard the living god comes into the midst of the house of god there is a lot of things happen miracles happen let's invite the presence of the living god in our midst this morning as we continue with the worship service may god bless us <laughs>